I bought a new camera the other day, so I thought I'd make a video of my 1970 NADA spec Rover 3500S um, just to try out my new camera. So here's the car behind me. So we've had it for a couple of years now. Do quite a bit of work on it. Um, replaced most of the lenses. Uh, new headlight bulbs for halogen. Sorted out the ice alert. Did brakes and suspension. And repainted the roof. The roof used to be kind of a metallic brown. Very poorly painted, probably with a spray can. It was really streaky. Uh, so this is some leftover blue paint that I had. The color I like a lot better. So repainted that. Added an antenna, though this location is not optimal. It has a very good reception there. I don't think it has a very good ground plane. And that's the whole car. So I'll pop the hood and you'll have to see the engine. So this originally had a 3.5 liter. It now has a 3.9 liter engine. Came out of a Land Rover Discovery. And it's also got an Offenhauser manifold and a poly four barrel carburetor. And when I transfer the engine, I brought along the serpentine system with it. So it's got a modern air conditioning compressor, modern alternator, modern power steering pump, and adapted them into the system. So the AC system with the has been completely replaced with modern stuff with the exception of the evaporator which basically there wasn't anything that I could buy that would fit inside the heater box. I've also got a, a ZF HP22 transmission which is a four-speed automatic which is really nice. The overdrive makes a huge difference on how this car feels on the freeway. Uh, rebuilt the uh, power steering box uh, added an overflow tank, a radiator rebuilt locally, and a new wiper motor. The previous owner had put fuel pressure gauge in. It's kind of nice. And then replaced the uh, brake master cylinder with a unit that I found at uh, the Bewley Auto Jumble in England a couple of years ago. Matter of fact, there was a uh, they published my letter to the editor on Practical Classics a couple of months ago, probably August of 2021, I think, with my article about buying that. The uh, mass, the slave cylinder brakes has been rebuilt as well. And of course, hoses, belts, wires, all that stuff's all been replaced. And we found a light to replace the missing one for the bonnet, though it's not very bright. It's really just a clearance marker light. This is the interior. So I had to replace some of the instruments and I rebuilt the tachometer as the original tach was the inductive type, which doesn't work with electronic ignition, uh, and a modern radio, which is Bluetooth capable aftermarket steering wheel and then this the dash cover the glove box covers the uh, door covers the center section of the rear seat I had to make from uh, this raw sheet material replace the headliner and made new sun visors and more of the work on the doors it's had new carpets in we did have to replace the uh, there are a couple of Rest spots in the floor, so the, those have been patched. And rear deck speakers, the uh, A columns and the C columns have both been recovered. Center console and the gator for the uh, emergency brake handle, all redone. All right, we got the car started. See the tax running nice and smooth it's also a decoded digital drive speedometer so it doesn't actually start to work till you're doing about 10 miles an hour which is a little annoying but didn't really have a choice I had to use a a drive for a cruise control so it doesn't really have the strength of output that 
the normal drive would have, but the normal drive comes off the tail shaft of the transmission, replaces a you know cable driven speedometer drive unit, and this transmission doesn't have that. The, the uh, Land Rover drove out of the rear axle because of the transfer case. There it is, just popped in. The automatic. Actually, it's just really nicely. There's third. It won't engage the fourth gear, which is overdrive. So you get to about um, 45 miles an hour or so, and then just after it engages overdrive, it also locks the torque converter. So it makes a huge difference that and this car would always do 70 80 miles an hour on the freeway but it was 3500 4000 rpms and now it's you know 2000 rpms on the freeway at like 65 miles an hour or something like that i think maybe even 70. well we'll see we're getting on the freeway here shortly so we'll have a better look then but it drives nice it's really comfortable uh, the last couple of days have been down to the airport a couple of times in San Francisco, uh, which is over 100 miles each time. So the wife took a little trip to go see one of her friends, and really comfy for that. Gets in the freeway, goes down fast, and then when we're in town, the automatic shifts really nicely. It's really kind of convenient with all the traffic lights and everything else that you get going through San Francisco. Normally, this car would be a lot of fun if it had a five-speed in it, to be honest. Um, you know, it'd be very peppy. But this is not bad. We set it up like this because I originally kind of thought that, you know, maybe the wife might like to drive it. But she bought herself a new Cadillac, so she really enjoys that car. It's actually an SUV, but this is nice. Power steering power brakes, power windows, the air conditioning works well with the modern R134 refrigerant. It's not quite as cold as I would like because it was designed for uh, R12 which has a lot more cooling power and unfortunately with not being able to replace the evaporator it's for the modern Freon it's a little small but you know up into the mid 90s it works pretty good. You get up into the upper 90s and up to 100 you're in town it's not working so good you know low speeds and it's okay on the freeway at that point you can see the shift here there we go third gear so you can see even around town it's pretty relaxed 1500 rpms we're doing 45 miles an hour and there's there's overdrive, we're doing 50 and it's 1300 RPMs. This car is easy to drive fast, it kind of sneaks up on you, it's so quiet. I really like this motor, it's, it's not crazy horsepower, I mean, you know, I've driven some Z28s, Corvettes, stuff like that, fast Mustangs. And compared to that, this car is not a fast car, but, uh, you know, compared to, like, the Herald, it's a lot faster than that. It's faster than uh, a stock TR3 or a TR4. And the, um, you know, it's just a V8. It's got a lot of torque down low, which is pretty nice, even though it's, it's only 215 cubic inches. It's the 3.5, so I think this one's... 230 or right around there because of 3.9 it's you know 10% bigger about um, but it's it's just a comfortable car you know the stereo sounds pretty good and it's uh, Bluetooth enabled so it you know it plays stuff off my phone which is kind of nice I really like all the instrumentation it's just a been a fun car so we're going to get back on the freeway here in a minute and I'll turn on again you can see how it cruises. Here we go, we're just getting onto the entrance ramp on the freeway.
head back out. New Caltrans yard. and then uh, melt cheese over them or something. It's, it sounds like a heart attack and a stick kind of thing, but uh, you, they don't show them, but you have to ask for them. And they have them. All 
we're gonna go back over the freeway here. This is a local gas station where I like, usually like to fuel up. So I fueled up in Santa Rosa today, this morning. I kind of forgot that it, I took this car to the airport a couple of times. So we're down to about a quarter tank. So I wasn't sure that'd be enough to get us through the day. So we gassed up on the way to Santa Rosa. Here we are back over the freeway. That's where we just came down. Mount Sonoma in the distance there. It's actually a ridge of hills. I don't suppose anything's actually tall enough to be considered a mountain, but this is the Petaluma Valley, which used to be part of the greater San Francisco estuary a few million years ago. This is why we're on expansive bay mud soils here. towards the house. I'm going to finish this tape up. Don't forget to like and subscribe and we will see you next time. Well, got home okay. Car drove really well. Camera was fun to play with. So I hope you all enjoyed it. And don't forget to uh, subscribe and to like. I'll see you later.